Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. This one was unexpected. It was, but we caught wind of some news on Monday that prompted us to act. We learned that Las Vegas Sands Corporation that owns Venetian and Palazzo are putting it up for sale. Yeah, breaks my heart. I'll tell you, <laughs> it just breaks my heart. But uh, hopefully they can get things worked out. We don't want to be too pessimistic about it. It's kind of strange because Circa, last night down on uh, downtown Las Vegas, had their big gala open, and I guess it's fantastic. And we're going to get a room down there as soon as we can. I mean, it's going to be a little difficult for a while. but uh, And at the same time, they announced that the, they were selling uh, uh, the Venetian and the Palazzo. Yeah, what the owners and operators said was that it's really impossible to make a profit without conventions and with limited occupancy, and we totally understand that. Yeah, and honestly, the, the Sands Convention Center is huge. It's wonderful, the Sands Expo. Yeah, We've it's, been it's, in it yeah, many, many times. It's, it's yeah. huge. <laughs> All right, we're here. We're uh, going to give you a room tour. We're going to show you the pool if we can get in it. I'm not sure. There's a lot of people here. And uh, find something to eat, and uh, hopefully this vlog is a good one. We're going to take a peek at the Grand Canal shops. We're going to go to the Palazzo Atrium, take a look at the fall decorations. There's lots to do. All right, let's do it. This adventure starts right now. The Venetian. This place holds a special place in our hearts because it was the first strip resort walkthrough that we did on this channel back in February 2019, and it set the stage for everything that came after that. We didn't book a room back then, but given that changes may be in its future, we are very, very happy to be here today. The Venetian was built on the site of the iconic Sands Hotel and opened its doors in May 1999. It cost $1.5 billion, which made it one of the most expensive resorts of its kind. Indoors and out, the Venetian was inspired by Venice, Italy, and we just love the Renaissance architecture and historical accuracy of all of this, half a world away, right here in Las Vegas. It's no wonder USA Today calls the Venetian the most romantic hotel in Las Vegas. Off to our right is a gorgeous reproduction of the Rialto Bridge, taking you from the balcony level of the Venetian down to the street and back up again. And there is the Bell Tower, a replica of St. Mark's Campanile in Venice. There are statues and carvings all over this place, inspired by the originals in Italy, and they are gorgeous. Of course, you can't think of the Venetian without the gondolas coming to mind. You have your choice of indoor or outdoor rides, serenaded by your gondolier as you float along. The outdoor version was doing a brisk business on this October afternoon, and I'll tell you what, we can't think of anything more romantic to do than this. Now you can also hop a ride indoors, gliding on a quarter of a mile of the Grand Canal, right past all the shops. Either way, this ride is enchanting and a must-do for couples and families. Cost is $29 per person on weekdays, and the rides run from 10 a.m. to 11 or midnight, depending on the day. All right, let's go grab the luggage and head to the lobby for check-in. We arrived around 2 p.m. and had a short wait in line for check-in. Waiting in this fabulous lobby is no hardship. The only word that comes to mind when you're standing in this space is splendor. The armillary sphere is the centerpiece of the lobby, a stunning recreation of the original and an enduring symbol of Renaissance spirit. The Grand Colonnade connects the reception area with the casino and is the number one selfie spot in the resort. Now here's a fun fact. The Venetian was modeled after Venice because the Adelsons, who built the resort, honeymooned there and fell in love with the city. The frescoes above our head were painted by Italian artists. 
The columns, statues, and even the patterns on the floor are made from Italian marble and replicate those in famous Venice landmarks. One of the things that makes the Venetian stand out is its incredible attention to detail in these recreations. We booked the luxury king suite for a midweek impromptu stay. It's 650 square feet of pure joy. In the upper area, we'll call that the bedroom, there's an oversized pillow-topped king bed, a dresser, and a nice-sized closet. In the closet, there is an ironing board and an iron, and a small-sized safe to keep your valuables in. A few steps down is your own gorgeous sunken living room with a cozy seating area and huge windows to enjoy the view. There's a desk for working, high-speed internet, and a total of three TVs, one in each room. Now, let me also give a nod to the molding and the architectural touches that elevate this from just another hotel room. I absolutely love the picture frame molding with wallpaper inside it. The ground molding throughout this entire room is unbelievably exquisite. And just look at how they dressed up the molding around the stairs. <laughs> I just love this kind of stuff. I think it's my inner Bob Vila showing. And then there's the bathroom. It has a separate glass shower, a Roman tub, double sinks, a makeup mirror, and all this gold trim. Paula was a big fan of the toiletries in here, white tea and rose. I'll tell you what, we could live here. In case this isn't big enough, the Venetian has more sweet options that go from 1,100 up to 8,000 square feet. It's a welcome pack with masks and sanitizer and stuff like that in a little zip pouch. Very nice. Very cool. Let's talk dollars and cents. Here we are at the Venetian on a Wednesday night, and the room rate for this gorgeous suite is $119. Of course, you have to add on the resort fees and taxes, so out the door for this one-nighter, we will be paying $186 bucks for a fabulous suite on the strip with all the trimmings, and you know what? I consider it money well spent. On weekdays, there is no wait list for the pool, although social distancing is enforced and masks are required when not in the water. This pool deck is two gorgeous acres, and there are four separate pools, three of them infinity pools. The pools are heated so you can swim even in the winter, and on a coolish day like today, heated water sounds great. There are hundreds of pool chairs for sunbathing, and you can, of course, rent a cabana. Mm -hmm. 
The bar is really inviting and in a perfect poolside spot. Comfy couches and chairs and looks well stocked, but guess what? It's not open. And in fact, no G&T for us this time around. There's no drink service at all at the pool these days. Days are getting shorter here, and with the hotel towers as a backdrop, the pool area did get shady the afternoon we were there. But the breeze was great, and the lounge chairs were perfect for a quick nap. All right, let's take a quick walk around the casino before we grab some dinner. The gaming space here at Venetian totals 120,000 square feet, and you've got your choice of all kinds of table games and slots. At one point in the evening, I did go over to the bar in the center of the casino and play a little kino. There's a poker room, and around the corner from that, a race and sports book that features a 10-foot tall by 100-foot wide TV spread. And I'll tell you what, that is a sports better's dream. And all of it surrounded by this Italian Renaissance magnificence. In fact, just past the sports book, I found this lovely little space and couldn't resist capturing the fountain and the statues. Just magnificent and off in a corner. Let us mention one other thing that goes hand in hand with the Venetian, the fabulous Sands Expo. This world-class convention space is more than 2.2 million square feet, one of the largest in the world. A fun fact we learned while watching the in-room TV, the executive chef for the meeting and convention arm of the business prepares and serves 3.5 million meals in a normal year. Think about that. It's absolutely staggering. Like we said, we caught sight of the Black Tap patio when we were out filming the gondolas and we thought it would be a great place to have dinner. Black Tap originated in New York City, and this is its second location. They are famous for their over-the-top crazy shake milkshakes, a perfect fit for the over-the-top Las Vegas. The menu is burgers, upscale but not fussy, and a nice list of craft beers. Okay, we have been filming a little bit after we left the room. We did the gondoliers and everything, and now we're at the Black Tap restaurant. Yeah, standing at the railing filming the gondoliers, we saw a nice terrace and we made our way to it. We've never been here, but it comes highly recommended from our friends, the Finneys in the UK. I think this is a brand new restaurant, right? I don't know how old it's been. We'll have to do some uh, research for the voiceover. So guess what? They have bison burgers and we love bison burgers. Bison burgers. We sure do. So Paula got the burger and I got the bison burger salad. We'll show it to you when it gets here. Making a choice for dinner here at the Venetian can make your head spin. There is so much to choose from. Black Tap is literally around the corner from the poker room and here along Restaurant Row you can have any kind of culinary experience you might be craving. Let's mention just a couple. Sugarcane is an award-winning raw bar grill that emphasizes the simple pleasures like eating well and celebrating with friends. There's an open fire grill, a raw bar, and traditional kitchen. Yardbird is a modern take on southern comfort food. Farm fresh ingredients, the best fried chicken in Vegas, and a dose of southern hospitality as well. We'll have to come back and look at all the other choices. That would be a vlog in itself, but here are a few that will get your mouth watering. Literally, one of the most charming aspects of a stay at the Venetian is a stroll through the Grand Canal shops. This shopping and dining thoroughfare connects Venetian and Palazzo and is one of our very favorite pedestrian areas in all of Las Vegas. There are over 160 signature stores here and honestly we are long overdue to see what's new in this fabulous style mecca. With 2020 being such a tough year for retail, restaurants, and Las Vegas in general, we weren't exactly sure what to expect, but honestly, it's as charming and full of life as ever. 
shopping and more shopping, name brands and unique products, you name it. And food. This is the food court with lots of choices for a quick bite and a big comfy seating area to rest your feet. In the mood for something special, the iconic Smith & Walensky is right here in the Grand Canal shops with their award-winning steaks. How about Mexican? You'll find the best Mexican street food at Canyonita along with happy hour margaritas. Romance on your mind? As we told you earlier, you can grab yourself a gondola ride along the Grand Canal here indoors under the blue sky. But the centerpiece of the area has to be this, St. Mark's Square. It is a faithful reproduction of the most famous area in Venice, St. Mark's. Just look up and around this gorgeous space at the detail of the architecture on the building fronts. It's just incredible. St. Mark's Square is the gathering place in the Grand Canal shops, home to several notable restaurants set up as sidewalk cafes, as well as charming shops and kiosks. In normal times, the streetmosphere performers delight the passerbys with song, dance, and mime. And I'll tell you, we are waiting anxiously to have them come back again very, very soon. Okay, if you've been watching our staycations for any length of time, you know we love us a nightcap before going back to the room. The Dorsey was the classiest spot on the casino floor, and it was the obvious choice. Just look at the array of liqueurs on this wall. Wow! The room is comfy and dark with lots of cozy seating areas that remind you of a big old living room. Now over here is the birdcage perfect when there's a group of you out for a good time, and it's right next to where the DJ spins the tunes on weekend nights. A really nice bar experience here at the Dorsey. The next morning, we walked over towards the Palazzo to catch the beautiful atrium in its fall colors. This is just outside the Palazzo Casino entrance, and you may recognize it, we have filmed here many, many times before. The love sculpture is the centerpiece here, but today we wanted to take a look at the fall flowers and plants. It is late October, and we don't get a lot of autumn foliage here in Las Vegas. We can always count on the talented horticultural team here at Venetian Palazzo to dazzle us with pumpkins, mums, and brilliant autumn color. It's very early in the morning. Uh, we're downstairs at the uh, Venetian. We're taking a few pictures, and we thought we'd just say goodbye to you guys. Yeah, we're in a pretty little spot, and we could peel our masks off real yeah, quick. So real we'll, quick. we'll grab that opportunity. Plus, there's music everywhere, and it's very quiet right here. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was kind of a quick little trip, and uh, we, we just wanted to honor the fine folks that work here at these these uh, properties because we feel bad for them. We, uh, we They don't know what their future is, and uh, we're going to be there and standing right next to them all the time, right? Yeah, we had some really nice conversations uh, with some of the folks that work here, which is one of the fun things about staying here. Right. We love chatting with the people that work in these places. All right, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Follow us on social media. And anything else, Paula? Nope. Thank you all so much for being with us, and we will see you next week. In fact, we have some Something so exciting coming next week. I can't even breathe. We'll tell you about <laughs> we'll it. Tell we'll you tell about you about it. it. <laughs> All right. I hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye bye, everybody. Before heading home, we decided to have breakfast at one of our favorite places at the Venetian, the Grand Lux Cafe. Yum.